Full Disclosure covered the City Council hearing on the future of public access cable channels and studios in Los Angeles. Among those testifying before the Council was 35-year entertainment industry veteran, Peabody and Emmy Award-winning executive producer Vin DeBona, who captivated television audiences when he introduced America's Funniest Home Videos in 1989. As co-chair of the powerful and influential caucus organization that represents writers, producers, and directors of new media, Full Disclosure asked Mr. DeBona about the importance of the public access channels on cable television and why the caucus was urging the city council to preserve the concept here in Los Angeles. Being the news behind the news, Full Disclosure once again was the only television media to cover this important event at City Hall. Uh, my name is Vin DeBona. I'm uh, executive producer of America's Funniest Home Videos, and I'm former chairman of the Caucus for Producers, Writers, and Directors here in Los Angeles. But more importantly, I'm, I'm a student of local television. I began my career in the late 60s uh, in Boston at a local TV station owned by Westinghouse where we produced 19 hours of local programming every week, excluding news. So there was room for philosophy, there was room for religion, there was room for discussion of issues on abortion, of rights to life, all issues that would come across the marketplace. In the early 90s, the FCC uh, reduced the rules uh, and made it easier for stations to get their licenses. And in doing so, they also made it easier for stations to say, we're cutting out local programming. Today, that same station I worked at in the late 60s does practically no live or local shows other than the news. So public access really is the only venue for training, for forums on discussion on both sides of an issue, that evolve and are not just a 25 second soundbite on the local news at six o'clock at night. It's the only way people can get ideas and, um, and training of young new people to learn the business. At that same station I worked at in the late 60s and even here in Los Angeles, uh, I worked at KNXT, now KCBS. We did a lot of things and there was, uh, you know, there was room for young people to come in and learn, learn a trade. So now that there's no local programming, there's no place to learn. Public access is that place to train. It's also a place where um, senior producers, folks who are sort of, you know, past being on network television, but still want to be able to contribute, it's a place for them to create their shows. So you have young, old, you have transformants, of ideas and a perfect place to learn. It's the best thing in television. You watched the entire hearing today. Mm -hmm. You listened to a lot of people talk and you heard the councilman speak. Mm -hmm. uh, what was your overall impression of what was accomplished today? Well, I think today the most important thing was that um, we were able to continue the thought that, that public access will continue. Now there's going to be more debate. The big issue, of course, is finance. And we'll need to be at the next meeting where finance is going to be discussed. Um, we sort of have a stopgap today. I, I wouldn't say we won today, but I say we certainly curtailed any effort to say there will be no more public access. But the fight is still there, but I think, I, I think the battle is tilted on our side. And um, I, I think that if the public can be part of uh, coming to a council and a council meeting and, and sticking up for their rights and looking at this as the sort of last bastion of the ability for people to speak their piece. You know, it's sort of public access is, access is an ombudsman for the community. We have to have that. It's very important. Um, 
There was a suggestion by one of the council members or a question about the new technology, satellite, uh, uh, other areas of being able to increase public access. Mm -hmm. Your organization is a very sophisticated, influential one and may be familiar with some of these avenues. Do you think that might be something that uh, the, the city could be encouraged to do to explore that, those opportunities? Well, sure. I think that, that satellite is certainly a, a, a fine possibility. Uh, there was a comment made that was very important, and that comment was relating to the web. And the issue that some of the cable companies are stating is that, well, now there's a lot of access on the web. And, and uh, someone said that there's a big difference between channel surfing and stopping and being glued to what's being said and being enticed to watch that rather than going on the web and just zipping through files and, and URLs and everything, um, you don't stop. You, ch you, you tend to stay for a fraction of a second, but usually the information is short. Um, the, the beauty of public access, access is that the information is extensive, and I think that's what the, in the importance is here. Well, very good. Um, do you see the, uh, the caucus uh, then continuing their interest in uh, supporting the, the concept? Well, I think we will. I think that um, um, it's, a, it's a new issue to us, um, and one we've just become aware with uh, from one of our members. And, and I think coming here today and seeing the, um, the real important philosophies that people can put forth about what they do and how they perform and how public access has been good for them and important in their career and also in, in creating new information to the community. Yeah, I think that's important for us too. Watch for the full disclosure complete report on this important issue coming to cable stations and the internet soon. And be sure and leave your comments below.